You'd like to believe that when you pay more for a base, that you really get more. And I think that this here is an example of a base that really is more. Uh, the materials, the craftsmanship, the shape and beauty, as well as the sound. So let's take a little quick tour and see what we got. Um, up here at the top, um, this scroll used to have a fifth tuner. So uh, we believe that this bass was originally made as a five string and uh, the tuners that remain are just stupendous. The one piece construction where the key uh, itself is forged from the same piece of iron that the worm gear is made from, then um, brass plates soldered on and then the whole thing nickel plated. So when this bass, when this was uh, made, these were the best tuning machines that could be uh, purchased. Um, <clears throat> no damage in here on the scroll. I'm going to spin this around so you can take a look at the scroll. Beautiful detail. Uh, I love this stuff here. And uh, very nice grain up at the top. Nice flaming. And also just beautiful detail. Well made base. <clears throat> and it's just a guess, but I would say at about the same time that the fifth uh, string went away, that the neck was shortened. And it's very hard to see, but there is a scarf joint right here, um, presumably to shorten the neck. There are no breaks or any damage that's occurred uh, here on the uh, heel, but once again I would guess that this uh, wood has been reduced in height to maintain the D neck um, mensure on this base <coughs> with a shorter neck. So let's see. Top, just top shelf wood and materials all the way around. So this is a beautiful piece of spruce, good strong grain lines, good um, strength all together. The shape of the base uh, remains uh, excellent. What I mean to say is there's no sunken parts. Maybe the top uh, can happen up here where the sound post, pardon me, where the base bar ends. And um, now, I couldn't tell you that there's been no repair on this base. I see a crack here, but it didn't get too far. When it was repaired, it was uh, caught in time before it got seriously involved with the base bar. There's a dark line here, but all this is grain. There's no crack. There is, however, a small crack right here. So probably some work has been done on the base, end of the base bar area. Then uh, just continuing down to the bottom of the base while we're there, you can see that this instrument has a mm, extended or raised saddle. And uh, the purpose of that is to reduce the downward pressure on the bridge. So it's a little easier on the top. Um, I want to show you the ribs, just beautiful wide space, widely spaced flame on this uh, wood that was selected for this base. External lining, um, almost accentuated violin corners, really uh, beautiful and pretty much undamaged. They look like they're in great shape. And nice flamed wood on the back. So uh, my contention is that this was uh, the best work of this maker when it was being made and it still shows today. The only label that's inside this base is a repair label, and um, there's no date there, uh, but the label is, uh, is Dutch, so it was in Holland at some point, and I know a little bit about the history of this base. It was imported to the United States kind of recently, in the, t in the past 10 years or so. Based on the tuning machines we were looking at, this base was clearly made before 1900, so I would say late 19th century, 1880, 1890, something like that. So let me play a few notes with a jazz approach so you can hear how great this bass sounds with a set of spiracores on. It's my favorite song, one of them for sure. This is the Lullaby of Birdland.
what happens with some higher notes. So then we'll also get a chance to hear um, Daniel playing this bass with a bow, and I think you'll also be impressed that this is an instrument that's versatile and has a wonderful tone uh, with bel canto strings and played with a bow. <laughs> ¶¶ 